Hello friends and welcome back to The Dork Side. I'm the dork in the road and today let's talk about how you can have a week-long adventure riding and motorcycle camping trip for just over $500. I'm the dork in the road and I want to be your internet riding buddy, so please consider subscribing and if you find this video useful, maybe think about hitting that like button. I super appreciate it. As many of you know, this summer I did a week-long trip on the Washington BDR with friends. Uh, it was an awesome trip. I did a full video series on that, which you can check out. I'll link the playlist for you. And there's also a full-length version. You can watch it all in one two-hour video. But that was basically the trip of a lifetime. That was a, a bucket list trip. It was such an amazing adventure, and I'm so glad that I got to go on. I have so many great memories, and I can't stop talking about it. I don't know if you guys have noticed that in my videos. One of the things that I want to point out about this adventure motorcycle camping thing that we love to do, or that I love to do, and you're obviously interested in or you wouldn't be here, it's actually one of the most inexpensive ways to get out and have epic adventures that exist as far as I know. Now, I know what you're going to say. You're going to come back with, yeah, but you got to buy an adventure bike. And that's true. But the cost of your motorcycle and your luggage, actually, is spread out over every adventure that you have, right? So the actual trip itself is only a portion of the cost of that bike. Yes, it's, there's a high startup cost, but many of you already have motorcycles and you can do an adventure motorcycling trip on almost any bike. Uh, you may have to change your route a little bit if you're running a street bike, but this kind of trip can be done if you have a motorcycle and some some bags to put your crap in. So I just want to talk about what my Washington BDR trip actually cost to give you some real world numbers. Or if you've decided not to do a trip like this because it's too expensive or you can't afford it, hopefully I can open your eyes a little bit and make you see or help you see that that is not as much the case. $500 is not a small amount of money, but it's also less than a plane ticket to most places that you might want to travel. Let me break down my cost for you so you know what I spent on this trip. And let's just start with the obvious, the first question question everyone asked, but what did gas cost you? And that's a great question. I started at my home here in Oregon. We rode all the way up to the Canadian border and then back down on the Washington BDR and then back to my home here in Oregon. I'm about two hours from the border of Washington. So all told, and this was during the summer, during July when gas prices were at their highest, I spent exactly $199.85 on gas. So one of the advantages to being on a motorcycle is they get better gas mileage. I was getting 40 to 50 miles a gallon the whole trip on my Norden 901. So I spent less than $200 on gas, all told start to finish. Small price to pay for that much traveling and again just way less than you would spend on a plane ticket The next biggest expense on a trip like this is food and drinks Obviously you have to eat food to survive and there's lots of different ways to do this You can restaurant it you can pack your own food ahead of time and bring like freeze-dried meals that you made at home I did not cook one time on the entire trip. We did six days and six nights because we went up and camped the night before I did not cook one time. I mostly honestly ate at gas stations eating like uh, really bad things like corn dogs and jalapeno poppers and pizza pockets and uh, we did stop and have one really good meal one big breakfast at the stockyard cafe but for the most part I was just kind of eating where I could find food as we went and then snacking on the stuff that I had in my bag in between so meals for the whole trip, I spent exactly $230.32 with a big caveat. And the big caveat there is I bought meals a couple times for everybody. Uh, you know, it's a business expense for me and I just like to treat my friends when I can. So uh, I spent $110 on meals that I was paying for food for other people as well as myself. So that number would go down significantly, 50 or 60 bucks. So conceivably you could do the whole trip and eat for less than $200. So those are the two major things that cost money to go on a trip like this your food and your gas other things that we paid for campground fees so we stayed in a campground the first night Trav actually covered that so thank you Travis uh, and then we stayed at Leader Lake which was free um, because we had the Discover Pass, which is another expense we'll talk about. We stayed at Lake Chelan State Park. That cost money. So adding all those together, I went in and did the research. And keeping in mind that I split these with everyone that I was with, but if you were doing it on your own, I spent $59 in campground fees. Uh, we dispersed camp the last two nights. That cost nothing. So three nights in campgrounds for $59. That's for the whole group. That's for everybody. That's all the sites that we paid for. The other big expense that isn't even big is in Washington, they want you to have a Discover Pass that gives you access to a lot of campgrounds. So we stayed at Leader Lake, but it didn't cost us anything because we had that Discover Pass. And it's a good way to support the state and you know, like help pay for the upkeep of the bathrooms and stuff that I was using along the way. So that was 35 bucks for a year. So in total, food, gas, campground fees, and my Discover Pass was $513.17. That's the whole trip for $513.17. There are 
are other expenses that you can throw in there, right? Like, oh, well, maintenance on your bike, gotta do an oil change. Eventually, yeah, it wears on my tires too, but those are all expenses that are included with owning the motorcycle and you probably already do that. Or you understand that if you make that investment, it pays off over multiple trips. It's not like it costs you the full cost of the motorcycle to go on one trip. At least I hope you don't buy a bike, go on one trip and then sell it. That's not a good idea. So other expenses, the thing people always wanna point out is your luggage is so expensive. Agreed, I have very nice luggage. I'm very lucky giant loop helps me out with that stuff that is the luggage that i recommend for these kind of trips just because it's really awesome really sturdy holds up really well and it's another one of those costs that you don't pay for for just one trip it is paid off over the course of many trips and the giant loop luggage has a lifetime guarantee so uh it'll literally you buy it once and it'll last you forever and they pretty much just replace or fix anything if you ask uh even if the circumstances are somewhat dubious as to how it got damaged. That's been my experience with the company. And yes, I'm biased, but just to throw it out there, what did I spend in luggage? So I have a 15% discount code to giantloopmotor.com. That code is dork in the road. So my panniers, my round the world panniers are $820 with the discount code. And my Tillamook bag is $187 with this discount code. That is if you pay full price with the discount code, those things routinely go on sale for 20 or 30% off. And subscribe to the Giant Loop channel if you haven't to get updated with that stuff when it happens happens but uh that's a thousand dollars thousand seven dollars in luggage which is a lot it's twice the cost of my trip but that is to buy luggage that will last me forever so there are less expensive luggage options out there that will do the job they just won't last as long so you don't have to spend that much money to go on a trip like this so my point is if you own a motorcycle or understand that the cost of your motorcycle is paid off over many many trips adventure motorcycling is one of the cheapest ways to have epic adventures that there is. And if you're trying to convince uh, a significant other or someone else in your life to let you buy a motorcycle, show them this video where I talk about how cheap it is to go on adventures. As far as adventure travel and having adventure goes, it is really, really hard to beat adventure motorcycling and these BDR trips in particular. If you do go on one of these BDR trips, I would encourage you to think about donating to the BDR, supporting them in some way, buying something from the holiday auction or buying a raffle ticket. They're giving away a Norden right now. I actually got this fleece because I'm a gold benefactor so I, I donated to support last year and I hope to do that every year if I'm able. It's a nonprofit organization that puts these routes together for you so uh, it's nice to give back to that when you're able to take advantage of it especially with the Oregon route coming up that I know I'm going to be on a lot. So if you have any questions about the trip or the cost of the trip please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you've been on a BDR trip what did it cost you? What did you spend on your trip? Please feel free to leave that in the comments. I know there are people out there who are hesitating to go on one of these trips for a lot of reasons but cost is a big one and so I just wanted to give a realistic example of what it costs to go on one of these trips and hopefully encourage people to get out there and take the plunge and give it a try because it's not as expensive as you think it might be. Get out there, have adventures. You can have adventures. That's why we're here. That's the point of this channel, to inspire, educate, and empower. So hopefully you feel inspired, educated, and empowered. And if you do, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you. And please do not forget to be excellent to each other. Oh, thank you. Excellent!